Hello and welcome to supporting your big fish in our big pond. How's everyone doing today? Great. All right, great. Well, we're really um, excited that you're here. And each of you, sh well, not each of you, but on each row, there should be some cards, some index cards with a pen. Um, Lauren, right over here, um, also has a few extra. So if any time you have questions that you want to ask, if you can write those down, and Lauren will pick them up in about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll do another kind of second wave um, for any questions that you may have. So this panel really is focused on the 2017 Princeton Review, finding that Vanderbilt has the happiest college students, and really talking about what that means and how that can put additional pressure on students, especially students that are here that don't feel the happiest. Um, so we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about resources. And our goal also is to really help you as parents think about the ways that you can be supportive while also giving your students some autonomy and letting them develop the strategies and skills that they need to be able to navigate disappointments, navigate failures, and really talk about what are some ways that students, we have expert students here that we're really excited about. They're gonna talk um, also about ways that their parents have been helpful and some uh, resources that they've utilized on campus and really, our whole point of this is to have you be able to ask questions and really get a student's um, point of view. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my role on campus. My name is Katherine Drotis Cuthbert and I'm with the Center for Student Wellbeing. And I also oversee Vanderbilt Recovery Support, which is our collegiate recovery program for students that are in recovery from addiction or in the contemplative stage and just are not, are uncertain about their patterns of use and have some, some concern about their misuse of alcohol and other drugs. And part of the role of the center is to really offer holistic services to all Vanderbilt students. So we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching for students, really dealing with topics like well-being, financial well-being, um, working with students um, on this entire spectrum of alcohol and other drugs. So that means students that may be living a substance-free lifestyle and having them get connected with other students that are like-minded on campus. Um, also working with students that may be high risk or binge users and working on harm reduction strategies and then also supporting those students that are sober and actively in recovery on campus and we feel very fortunate to be able to have our collegiate recovery program Vanderbilt recovery support which not only has a space within the Center for Student Wellbeing but we also have recovery housing on campus as well. At the center, we also have weekly well-being practices. So we have things like yoga and massage, as well as meditations most days of the week. And our goal is really to be able to give students coping strategies and really be able to build up their resilience. So some of you may already know this, but a lot of um, your students are really high achieving. And what we find is that when students are really high achieving and they're used to being kind of the best of the best, is they come to a place where everybody is the best of the best and sometimes people struggle with that. They struggle not being number one in their class or they struggle with not being um, you know, the most social person um, on campus and that can really be a challenge. So what we're gonna do is talk about ways um, that you can be a support for your students but also the resources that can be helpful that the students can get connected to. And that's part of it is that the students really also have to have a willingness to connect with the resources that we have and the supports that we have and we offer so many. We also have workshops at the Center for Student Wellbeing and we have an academic skills coach who's amazing but we have uh, test prep, we have study skills, um, workshops that are really designed for those, those coping skills and trying to figure out how do we get through this and it's okay to have disappointment and it's okay to you know not get an A on everything. You may not feel that way but it really is okay and, and then how do we move on from that. Um, so those are the things that, that we're going to talk about today and I'm going to pass it on to Drew. Oh, yeah. Hi guys, um, my name is Drew. I'm from New York and I'm a junior. I'm double majoring in HOD and psychology and I'm minoring in business. Oh, HOD is human and organizational development. It's a major in the Peabody School that focuses a lot on like problems within organizations and how we can go about solving them. So I'm also a member of LEAPS, which stands for Liaisons Educating and Advocating for Psychological Support. And it's a student group out of the Center for Student Wellbeing, so we work closely with them. And we do a lot of presentations on ways you can like manage your stress and like connecting students to the resources that are available. And also we do fun things like 
cookies when everyone's stressing about their gen chem exam and like puppies on the lawn so we'll do a lot of things to just try to help the mental climate of Vanderbilt um, other than that I'm involved in momentum dance company and um, I'm in Greek life so if you have any questions about how that can play into mental health send it my way hi everyone I'm Johnny I'm a senior uh, I major in religious studies and as far as the um, study as to the happiness of Vanderbilt students, uh, I don't really try to concern myself too much with those sort of things. I just try to, because I, I really don't know how they calculate those statistics or, you know, <laughs> no one ever asked me if I was happy at Vanderbilt. <laughs> uh, so I don't worry too much about that. I just try to worry about my own happiness and my friend's happiness and uh, just try to, you know, general well-being around campus. Um, but I am a member of the Vanderbilt Recovery Support Program. Uh, I struggled with addiction for my first two years of uh, college coming in. Um, my struggle started in high school, but they escalated being alone in college and on my own. My um, use escalated a lot. And by my sophomore year, it became a serious problem, so I ended up um, getting sober in my junior coming into my junior year of school and VRS and the Center for Student Wellbeing has been an amazing resource for me um, there's a pretty good community of sober students at Vanderbilt and there's also just a lot of good activities to do when you know besides fraternity parties or besides going out on the weekends such as you know hiking or clubs that um, I'm a member of the Interfaith Club. Um, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of clubs that you can join. That's one thing, as a, as a freshman and sophomore, I wish that I had gotten uh, more involved with clubs early on. Um, because not only is it a, a great way to make friends, but it's a great way to just expand your um, knowledge outside of the classroom and to um, really get the full Vanderbilt experience. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm here representing VRS, and uh, unfortunately, addiction is a, a part of some students' life here at, um, in college. Uh, that's just the reality. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't happen to anyone's children in this room, but you know, it does happen. And but it's not the you know, it's not the end of the world. You can still be a successful student. You can still have a great time. Um, I've had a wonderful experience at Vanderbilt through all my trials and tribulations. Um, and I really wouldn't change, change a minute of it, even though it's been, you know, obviously there's tough times. That's just, um, that's just college, I suppose. But um, yeah, if there's any questions about recovery or addiction with college students or just any questions in general about um, being an incoming freshman or, or uh, being a parent. Also, my um, parents were very supportive of me um, when I admitted to them that I had a, that I had a problem. Um, they were very supportive. And Vanderbilt is very fortunate to have the, the VRS program and the, the sober living facilities on campus um, so that it was easy for me to transition into a sober lifestyle on campus. And uh, so just as a, as a parent, um, once again, I hope no one in this room has to go through that sort of stress, but um, uh, being a, as a, um, a parent of a, of a child with addiction, I know that's hard, so for them to have the resources at Vanderbilt available and for them to have um, Catherine, who's been a great help for me. Um, and uh, just to know that there's a support system in place at Vanderbilt ready and always there for me was a great relief for my parents. You know? So uh, that's all I have to share for now. Um, look forward to fielding questions, thank you. Yeah, totally. Something to take away from that is the fact that there are so many resources, so many ways to support each other here at Vanderbilt. And I think something that is based off of the statistics a lot, you know, happiest students, whatever, um, is actually a rating of those resources. And like you said, it's not 
necessarily people from the Princeton Review asking students how happy they are. So it's like Vanderbilt has the capacity to have really, really happy students, but we the students also have to go and seek out those resources and utilize those resources. So just so I could like gauge the room, how many people in here are parents of a first year student? A lot, okay, cool. So when I was a first year student, I came in and there's this like interjection of so many things. You have the crossover of living alone, trying to succeed in a high achieving academic environment and joining clubs, making friends, you don't know anyone. There's all these things that are happening at once, and but there, it's okay, because there's resources here and there's so many things you can do. I found myself struggling in statistics, which was my easiest class in high school. I was so good at math in high school, and then I come to Vanderbilt and I'm like, oh my God, I cannot get a good grade in this class. Like, what is going on? So I actually went to the Center for Student Wellbeing and I went to one of their like tips for studying type of things and um, just learned a bunch of new strategies and I started like trying those strategies and stuff like that, ways to study. I actually found myself like doing <laughs> statistics best in like, I would study in like the hallway of like the staircase of my dorm. I was like, no one will bother me. Like, I'm just gonna go up and study in there because it was super quiet. And I was like, I actually did way better on just like trying to like find a place and like look at strategies to study. So it's just like one example of like a way when I was a freshman, I was overwhelmed with one class and I like was able to like reach out and utilize those resources and they actually like really helped me. So um, if you have any like questions about that, write it down. I've utilize other resources too, but this is a good example. Should we go into some of these questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll answer this one. Um, is sobriety possible in a sorority or a fraternity? Um, I would say yes, it is definitely possible, but I'm not going to lie, it's definitely more difficult. Um, I was involved in my fraternity my junior year and uh, just being around just the drinking um, and the use was defi definitely a strain on my sobriety. Uh, but the most important thing that I got, and so I ended up not being a part of the fraternity in, this, in, uh, in the spring, and, and this year I'm not in the fraternity either. But the most important part of fraternity and sorority life is the friends that you, that you make out of that. Um, and for me, what I started to realize is that the only reason I would go to the fraternity house or to go hang out with my friends was in order to, to drink. And that's when I really realized I had a problem because I wasn't going to actually be with my friends. I was going there for the substance. So once I took the substance out of my life, I had to reevaluate evaluate a lot of my friendships but I found that indeed my friendships did stand strong and um, I made what I hope will be lifelong friends in the fraternity. So I would, I would recommend um, fraternity and sorority experience or, or at least to give it a try. Um, I thought it was a great opportunity, um, but it's also not necessary and it will definitely, if you're trying to live a sober lifestyle, definitely be more difficult. That's, there's no denying that. But um, just uh, another thing I want to bring up is just, um, you know, a lot of being the happiest students at Vanderbilt, I would say, has a lot to do with, um, with friendships in general. And I know most of you have uh, students that are first years, and uh, that's one of the biggest things of the first year, obviously, is making new friends. So if any students are struggling with that, I would recommend um, clubs are a big option for that. They're, always, they're seemingly always open and accepting new members. So that's always a great opportunity to make friends. Um, also, going to the, the rec center and playing basketball or, or um, you know, badminton or something like that is also a good opportunity for socialization. Um, when Rush comes around, um, rush is a really stressful time, at least it was for me. Uh, so that, that can be mixed emotions on, on that front, I would say, but that's also a good opportunity to make, to make friends and stuff. But um, yeah, um, I would say that 
if any of uh, your, your first year students are struggling on that front, definitely talk to them into maybe going to getting into clubs or going to the rec or um, just getting more involved on campus in some way. Yeah, I have to totally agree with that. It is, that was something I struggled a lot when I first came here. It's like you're scrolling on Instagram and you see everyone that you like followed before you came to school and you're like, oh my God, they have their best friend already. Like we are a week in, like how do, how do you know each other so well? I'm like, I was super nervous. I was like, why is everyone making friends and I'm like not. So definitely joining clubs is a big thing. I joined a dance company when I first came here and I met like some of my best friends still today. And um, it was real, that's a really great way because you can almost like gauge the interest like you all will have something in common because you're all like drawn to that club and you're drawn to that organization which is super great um and then it's also like you meet people on your floor and stuff like that but rush for uh at least the sorority girls is second semester so you almost have a chance to make that in those initial friendships and then i found that i joined a sorority that not a lot of my initial friends were in which was perfect because then you get that many more friends it's not like you lose any friends you made before so that was really great and now I've met some of my best friends in my sorority and we're all living together and like <laughs> it's really great but you know there's that initial kind of shock of like I don't know anyone here like who am I going to be with so I think it's good to like recognize that and like almost like portray to your kids that, like that's okay like you don't have to know yet you don't have to have your friend group or whatever yet and um, it's definitely hard to look at social media and have people portraying that but also know they probably don't know those people that well either it's we're a month into school so it's just always good to like kind of get that check and like remember that everyone's in the same boat we all just got to this brand new place together and I'm just gonna add to that as well since I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching um, one thing that we see a lot at the Center for Student Wellbeing is that difficult transition and the sense that everybody else has their friend group and I haven't found my tribe yet. And it does take time because sometimes people may get in the habit of they go out and they drink a lot more than they normally would because they're trying to fit in but then they're still not really making friends. They're just making people to drink with. Um, so it's really important for them to take time and to really get involved. There's so many things to do on campus. Now, that's also a fine line as well because we have a lot of overachievers um, on campus. So we don't need people to, to join 10 student orgs and try to be president of all of them. Just join a couple where you can actually develop and find that friend group and find people that have similar interests to you. That's really crucial because sometimes we just latch on to somebody because they're right there, but it, it's important to take time to really try and figure out what is it that's important to me and what is it that I can do um, to make those friends. And I think being open and trying different things is, is really one of the best um, things that you can do. Yeah. Um, what tips can you share for a student to reduce stress? Uh, I think that, as I said before, the rec center is a great, great place to just blow off some steam, um, either working out in the, in the gym or or for me, it's mostly playing basketball. I, I really enjoy doing that to reduce stress. Um, socializing, of, of course, is a good way to, to reduce stress, I find. Um, also, I find, paradoxically, that staying active and busy actually helps reduce my stress because when you're doing something, you don't really have time to stress. I've noticed that like my stress is the worst, so I'm actually idle, and there's something I should be doing, and I'm not doing it, and that's when the stress kicks in. But when I'm like actually doing something and busy, then I don't really stress as much. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to stay as active as I, as I can. I also think utilizing some of the resources at the Center for Student Wellbeing, like taking an hour to meditate. It sounds counterintuitive, 20, 20 minutes. <laughs> I do the hour one sometimes. The meditation room is also like just open when it's not being used for like the actual guided meditation. So you could like pop in your headphones and do one on Spotify or something like that. Um, that's really encouraged as well. So it's, it does sound counterintuitive if you have like a major test or something to actually stop studying and go meditate for a second because you're like obviously not studying, but it puts you in the mindset to like be more focused and actually like 
productively study. And so I find that like that really helps your stress level. Um, even if you're in the library, there's a lot of resources. There's a lot of apps for like meditation. It's called one's called Headspace um, that I like a lot. It's on Spotify. If you already have like a subscription to Spotify, um, you could find some meditations on there. Um, but yeah, and then like just like taking care of yourself, I think is really important. The exercise is always great. And like it is, it can be hard to like kind of say to your your child stop studying because <laughs> they're gonna wanna obviously get a good grade. But in the long run, it's important. And I think sleep is really important. <laughs> Just from like being like a psych major and, and everything, I'm like super aware of that. We focus a lot on that in like cognitive psychology, how sleep actually consolidates those memories. So it might actually be better instead to get another hour in of studying to actually just go to sleep mm -hmm. and help those memories you've already had actually really sink in. Um, so I think that's always important to remember, kind of counterintuitive. Um, for one of my HOD projects, which is more of a business side of things, um, they're actually trying to implement um, where you can rent out like one of the nap hammock type of things. I forget what they're called, like Enos. Oh, yeah. So if you live on Commons and you're like, oh, I just need to take a quick 20 minute nap, but I have to walk all the way back to Commons, you could actually rent it out like with your Commodore card is the thought. Like you would rent out a basketball at the rec and you can take a little nap on the lawn. Like that's kind of lovely. Um, so, you know, things like that are in the works and um, there's definitely ways, you know, to really reduce your stress. This was a question about what are Vandy's policies about vaping. So we are technically as a nicotine tobacco free campus. However, there are a couple locations on campus where um, individuals can smoke or vape. Um, obviously with a lot of the um, new deaths, the recent deaths that have, have occurred, um, that's something that we're gonna be doing more education around. Uh, I think the, the difficult thing is that when these new um, these new mechanisms come out is that the we don't have the information. I mean, I, I feel like if you know that you're inhaling something that's a chemical, probably not great, but we don't have the research to back it up yet. And so sometimes it comes out late. I think the same is true for marijuana where we have now a lot more information about the short term and long term effects of marijuana use, um, especially in states that have been legalized. We see increased amounts of um, vehicular accidents that are marijuana related. We see a lot more um, incidents of individuals being ho hospitalized. I believe it has gone up 66% in the state of Colorado. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation. I believe that's true about vaping as well. So I think education is a policy, but students aren't allowed to vape in their residential halls. They're not allowed to just kind of walk around campus vaping. Does that mean sometimes people do? I'm sure. Um, but that really is not part of the overall culture um, at Vanderbilt. And our goal is to also be doing more educational pieces that are giving students the information both uh, of short-term and long-term effects. So I have a question here about um, someone tried to sign up for a tutor, but all the spots were filled. Um, where can she go to get that support? Um, so. Here's something they don't teach you in high school, is that professors and TAs want you to go to them and talk to them. Like, it, it could be scary, like you're in like a 100 person lecture and you're like, oh my God, like, I can't go talk to this professor, like what? Like everyone's gonna do that, no. They, that's, they want to talk to you, they want to help you, they want to go to that job. So even if the tutor isn't available, I would say go to the TA. They're there to help you. They're grading what you're doing so they're definitely going to know what you have to do to succeed um, and even the professor they definitely have office hours um, I'd say that would be the next place to go if for like general study tips um, the Center for Student Wellbeing does do like the presentation I was talking about earlier that I used for my statistics class um, so there is like ways you could go and just learn more like general study tips and like how to maybe do math better, just generally, generally study for math better, things like that. Uh, this is a really good question. I'm not exactly sure how to answer it, but I'll give it my best shot. Uh, what's the best way to help your student use the resources if they don't want to? Um, maybe, maybe tell them not to use the resources and then they'll... Uh, well, I can relate to this question because my, in my first two years at college, I, I wasn't in any clubs or anything like that. And, um, 
And my parents were constantly telling me, like, Johnny, there's a, a hundred different clubs. Um, you know, why don't you get involved in one? And I was just like, Mom, I'm fine. I'm just doing my thing, you know. And, uh, and I wasn't really getting involved. Uh, so I guess what changed for me is I found something that I was very passionate about. Um, and I was like inspired to then go find clubs that were related to that. So I would um, recommend for your student to look, I'm sure you know what your student's passionate about, so just I guess tell him or her that you know there's probably a club or an organization in that realm or in that field because they, it really covers the whole gamut of anything from like anime to religious groups to you know acapella or anything you can really think of they have it so just um, point them in the direction of something they're really interested in and uh, but that is a difficult that is a difficult question um, if I if I think of a better answer I'll try to give another crack at it yeah, and going off that, this question actually kind of connects there a bit. It says, are students aware and encouraged to use um, the well-being center program? So similarly, I feel like my job within LEAPS is generally to give presentations about tips and such, but also give presentations about the resources that are available, and then kind of giving my own like personal perspective how they have helped me. I think really putting a face. So if you meet someone in a club or something and they're like, this has been the best thing for me, you might like it too. So I think just having that general kind of, almost like wait, seeing someone who's benefited from it, I think is really good in, in encouraging to join a club or utilize a program, things like that. The one thing I want to acknowledge is that I, um, I realize that our panel is not very culturally um, diverse and we don't have any international students. These can be additional stressors at Vanderbilt. So it's really important. I um, was a posse mentor for four years and um, my students came from New York City. So even that's a big culture shock of coming from the city and then adapting to life in Nashville, Tennessee. So thinking about connections that students um, can also get support from. So the BCC, the Black Cultural Center, is a really amazing resource on campus. It's a space for students um, not only to be able to go to worship, workshops, we also have uh, one of our students, uh, one of our well-being coaches, um, go to the BCC for individual coaching appointments, but we also, there's workshops there. There's a space where students can just hang out. Um, for international students, there's an entire office that's dedicated for support of international students. So I think that that's also something that we haven't talked about uh, or addressed yet, but I think that those are also really important resources for students and parents to be aware of. Um, someone asked a really great question about kind of talking about the extent of communication and touching base, and, and that's really the fine balance. So I also have uh, two stepchildren that are in college, and so I do this work, so then sometimes I want to you know, get overly involved, but then I know don't get overly involved. So I think that part of what we talked about is really allowing the students to grow and mature. In order to do that, they need a little bit of space. And so every family dynamic is different. You may have a dynamic where you talk every single day, and that's great. Um, but that's probably not most students' and parents' interactions. So sometimes I, I had a one of um, one of the students that I work with gave really great advice. She just said text text and you may not always receive a response but we always get it we always see it we hear it we know that we love you and that's been really helpful so then I also don't take it personally if I don't get that response immediately like knowing that it's being seen knowing that it's being heard um, especially if you're somebody who lives really close how do you then give them the distance and the space if proximity wise you're right here um, I think that's something to be mindful of. You know, we have uh, kind of this culture a lot of times of, the, you know, known as the helicopter parents and wanting to fix things so the students don't have it as, as rough as we did or, you know, seeing what's going to happen and how do we allow that to happen. And I think part of my work within Vanderbilt Recovery Support is I can see things or see the trajectory of, of how something's going, but I can't always stop it. And usually I can't stop it. So how do I then be a support and help be a resource and I think that parenting is the same way is you may see something going on that
that you can't necessarily stop because it's not your life. But how do you then help the student get connected to resources? Did you want to add something? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my parents who are in the audience. <laughs> they've been they've been really great at that. I have to say, and I think one of the things that I personally have valued a lot is. Um, they let me vent to them. <laughs> I'll just go on and like, oh, well, what if I do this? Well, maybe I should do this. I don't know, should I apply for that? Like, they listen and they take it and then they provide some real honest and like good feedback. But I can't say they've ever really been like, you need to do this or anything like that. They've just been there for whatever I wanna do and talking through it with me. So thanks guys, <laughs> you're killing it. Um, but it's definitely been good, you know, to have that contact and not have like over contact you know like we'll text and be like things like that and then talk every now and then but it hasn't been too much where I feel like oh my god I have to tell them like everything in my life it's like I do get my freedom but it's always good to like run through stuff with them which I love so thanks <laughs> and I think that's a good point is that sometimes um it's really important for students to develop those friendships and those relationships outside of the family network so they have people that they can go to if something comes up or they're having a challenge where then they have a peer group that they can also get support from. Did you want to add something? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, um, coming back from my junior year, my uh, parents were all obviously a little worried about me because I was um, you know, trying to be sober on campus. So they would call me every single day, sometimes twice a day. And at a certain point, um, I actually talked with my therapist about it, and he, and he told me, you know, you have to set some boundaries with that. So I told them, Mom, Dad, you can't call me every single day, you know. I need a little bit of space, I know. So we don't talk as much anymore. But I think it's necessary to set boundaries and even if you even if your student is calling you every single day maybe you should set some boundaries as well and say you know maybe twice a week or something like that because a little bit of distance is uh, can be beneficial I also think it's important to remember that this is not only the f about academics necessarily but like it's the first time you're like living on your own so I would call and be like how does health insurance work? You know, like things like that can like also trigger like some like phone calls and some like necessary support from like people in the real world because we're trying to break in. But um, yeah, so I think that was like really helpful too. So, yeah. and then we have a question. That I think each of us could um, kind of give some insight into it. it. Says, what are you doing to diminish the stigma of getting help for emotional issues? And I think this is something that Vanderbilt has really embraced. The chancellor a couple of years ago started um, a, a campus-wide initiative called Go There. And so the whole idea is that you, if you need help, you reach out, you talk to someone. And even the Center for Student Wellbeing, we're now starting our fourth year. We, a few of us were located in different offices, but we realized the need to create this space that we already have a really um, robust counseling center and students do utilize it which is really incredible but also having this space where students can have weekly well-being practices along with coaching support and so part of what we do is we do a lot of initiatives we partner with uh, the Vanderbilt student government so we go into lecture halls and we talk about the resources that are available to campus and I think the students are really the greatest ambassadors for telling other students about um, kind of what, how important it is to reach out if you need help. And I, I know that sometimes this can also be a cultural um, concern where maybe someone's coming from a culture where we don't reach out, we don't tell other people, this just stays within the family. But again, that's part of um, letting your children grow and mature is allowing them to make some decisions for themselves and getting the support that they need, especially if they're really far from home, because that can be really challenging when they feel like they can't just go see their parent at fall break. They can't just go see them at Thanksgiving break where there really is that separation. I think this is also a really great point, place to talk about um, the Office of Student Care Coordination. So that is something new that started last year and I think it's really great because it is confidential. However, if you want to talk about your experiences to your friends, 
they it's it's obviously up to the students. So the Office of Student Care Coordination is basically an initial starting point for where you go if you start to feel like your mental health is not in the best place. So you go to the office, you'll meet with someone and they'll kind of gauge like what you might be struggling with and then they will point you in the direction of the correct resource. So when I went like just taking my statistics example again, if I went to them and I was like, this is causing me a lot of stress, I don't know what to do, like da da da, like talking to them about it, they're like, you should go to this presentation on study tips. So I went to the presentation. If someone goes and they're like, I'm just generally experiencing a lot of stress, I can't pinpoint it, they might tell them, go to meditation. If there's different problems, they might put them in an appointment with the UCC, which is the University Counseling Center, which is awesome that we as students have access to actually talking to a therapist, which is available to everyone and everyone. Like it's that's great. Um, if they think it might be substance related, they'd point them to um, you guys. And like, so it's just very much like an initial place where you can go and start to like gauge what you might be struggling with. And it is 100% confidential too. The other aspect of it that I think is really important is that um, friends or an RAs and um, other like peers can also put in a kind of like notice that like, hey, I think this person is struggling with something like they might not want to talk to me, but I think they need an initial push to kind of go. So then that office would reach out to them and be like, hey, I think we should set up an appointment. So that's also a 100% anonymous too. So if you like, think your friend might be struggling with something and want to support them and want to help them, you can do it in an anonymous way that won't really affect your friendship. Um, so, and then I think if those resources work, I've, in generally my experience, people have been like, you should try it. It works really well. Like, go there, check it out. Um, so just talking positively about those experiences has been good too. Yeah, I've found that that stigma is rapidly disappearing, um, at least in the circles that I gravitate in. There's a, I'd say that stigma doesn't really even exist anymore. The, um, it's almost like the hip thing to do nowadays to go get help for your emotional problems. So, which is a good thing. Um, and yeah, the UCC is a great resource. The Center for Student Wellbeing is a great resource. Your friends are a great resource. Sometimes, you know, the library and just getting into a nice book is a great resource as well, you know. Uh, so I'd say that uh, it's a very friendly campus when it comes to that sort of um, stress because a lot of students are under a lot of stress and uh, and people recognize that and they understand what people are going through. And I'd say that overall it's a very considerate um, campus. Yeah, and now we have a question. What do you think you are doing different than other universities for consistently getting the happiest campus rating, rankings? Um, I'd say part of that is what I said before about being um, a compassionate and considerate um, group of students. 99% um, of the students that I've encountered at Vanderbilt have been have been considerate and compassionate and, and kind. Uh, and um, and I say and I, I'd say that rings true for the professors and for all the administration as well. And another more uh, more I guess arbitrary point is I think that the campus is very convenient. Um, it's a uh, very well situ situated. Um, for one, it's in the heart of Nashville, so there's a lot of opportunities for for things to do in the city. Um, there's a lot of good restaurants around. There's a. Uh, it's also not too large a campus, so you can walk from the recreation center to Commons to you know the dining halls to the fraternity houses all pretty easily, and it makes for a very um, family-like atmosphere on the campus, I would say. So I think that contributes to happiness as well. And I think another thing that contributes to ha happiness is just the academic vigor of, of, the, of the studies because when you feel like you're really putting an effort and learning a lot, that, that makes you happy, especially when you're um, you know, real students like you find at, at Vanderbilt. I also think the first year experience, because all the students are 
on the commons together it really is this shared experience and while it can be challenging the first I would say the first semester can be really challenging for some students because they haven't quite found their group yet but the experience overall can be really powerful and it makes people feel like they belong and I think that is I know it's that's my goal that's the goal of the Center for Student Wellbeing that's the goal of Vanderbilt recovery support and leaps is that students feel like they belong here we want students to feel like they have a space and I think that because additionally it's a it's a residential university students are on campus most students are on campus all four years so they really do create their family outside of their family on campus I agree with everything they just said they covered it all um, are there any other questions? Oh, we have one more question. Oh, we already answered. Uh, is there any other questions? If so, Lauren can um, come on by and, and grab them. I have something I would like to say since I know it's uh, Parent and Family Weekend. I always um, like to use research that um, I think is, is really helpful and I think sometimes it's counterintuitive. Um, but research has shown that parents who drink with their um, underage students actually those individuals tend to be high risk in binge drinkers outside of that. So there's this thought, oh, if I drink with my, with my student, then they will learn how to drink in a moderate way. But research actually shows the opposite because what it does is it creates this culture that it's acceptable to have substances. So just something to think about as it's parent and family weekend. And even if your um, students are 21 and older, um, again, obviously they're old enough to drink, but just thinking about the you know, kind of the, the manner in which uh, you partake. That's my little two cents that I like to share. Anyone else have any additional insights they'd like to share? <laughs> I'd like to know if Vanderbilt has the happiest parents. Oh. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to send you all a survey. <laughs> Well, we will be here for um, a short time afterwards, so if you have any additional questions that maybe you didn't feel comfortable asking as a large group, please come, up, uh, come on up. We really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's a busy day. It's a hot day. So just really enjoy your time with your students this weekend, and welcome to Vanderbilt. Thank you. Thank you.